name's Darren. Welcome to my workshop. Today we're going to take a look at circular saw blades. We're going to look at uh, how they're made up, the different portions of a saw blade, and how to pick the right one for the job you're going to use it for. Alright, let's have a look. Let's start by taking a look at the anatomy of a saw blade. So, obvious things aside, these are the teeth. Uh, now, these are carbide teeth, which means that on the plate, this is the plate of the blade, and where the teeth are cut out of the plate, we then have pieces of carbide welded to the plate. Okay, so carbide tooth blade. Um, we've got, I don't know how well you can see them, let me pick that up. Maybe you can see them better now. These are expansion slots, and in this case we've got little brass lugs in the bottom. Uh, most expansion slots don't have these, quite often you'll have like a wiggle at the end, a little round hole. It varies from blade to blade. In fact, if I grab this cross-cut blade here, again this is a 12 inch off my old saw, you can see a different style of expansion gap right there. More common too. You can get two different diameters of holes, or commonly two different diameters of holes in the centre. And for that reason, often you'll get a bushing. This is a bushing in here, used to reduce the diameter of the hole where it sits on the spindle in the arbor. Uh, so it can fit different size saws. And there you go. Uh, once in place, you'll never take the bushing back out normally. It's because you put it on a different saw. On the teeth themselves, there's a couple of things worth noting. One of which is the hook angle which is the angle that the tooth here is cut at in reference to 90 degrees from the centre of the blade. So if we come out at a tangent, this is very rough of course, it's probably fairly inaccurate, but we come out at a tangent and then follow the edge of the blade there, that angle is our hook angle. And that's important because that varies from blade type to blade type. Typically a cross cut is about 15 degrees, whereas a rip cut is normally around about 30 degrees, a far more aggressive cut. This area in between the teeth is called the gullet, and this is what removes the dust. So basically you chop your piece of wood, the dust gets crammed into the gullet until it's round out of the wood, and it spits it down into the base of the saw basically. And something else keep, worth keeping in mind when you're buying a saw is the width of your carbide, if you're going with carbide. The thicker this piece of carbide is, the more often the saw can be sharpened. And in fact, one of the rips saws I've shown you, I have in fact had sharpened before. If you look at the teeth of a blade like this, uh, the, they're sharpened alternatively. So you've got a point on one side, then the next tooth down on the blade will be sharpened this way. So they're chopping out alternate parts of what we call the kerf. Now that's important because the kerf is the width from this edge here to this edge of the next tooth or teeth. So you've got effectively, if you overlap them, you've got tooth one and tooth two. And this width here is what we call your kerf. And the kerf is the gap left in the wood. That's important to know because for some things you need to add or subtract the width of the kerf. Uh, and some things you want as narrow a kerf as possible. So you might be buying a blade for some very fine work and you want a very thin kerf. So that's good to know. And that's usually listed on the blade somewhere too. If it's not written on the blade, it'll certainly be written on the packaging that comes with it. Um, No, this one doesn't have the curve written on it, but it does have a little picture of these two. On the table saw, I have a rip blade. Rip blades are great for cutting along the grain, or parallel to the grain, and they do the job a lot quicker than a cross cut or a combination blade would do. And that's due to the way the teeth are arranged and the gullets. So if we zoom in, let's have a look. You can see we have much bigger gullets on a rip blade for clearing out the dust and chips as we go. Uh, there are fewer teeth on a 10 inch blade, typically that's about 24 uh, teeth. 
and the teeth have a more aggressive cutting angle, about 30 degrees. It's no surprise that on my compound miter, or crosscut saw, I have a crosscut blade. So let's take a look at that. So you can see there's a lot more teeth on a crosscut blade, and they're smaller teeth. The cutting angle is a little bit shallower, it's typically about 15 degrees. And the gullets are a lot smaller, because it doesn't have to remove as many chips. The blade's designed more to slice through the fibres of the uh, wood, rather than to go along between them. The great thing about a crosscut blade is when you're doing crosscuts, it leaves a much smoother finish. If you use a rip blade for crosscutting, it would leave a fairly rough finish. Combination or general purpose blades sit somewhere between the crosscut and the rip cut blade, having 40 or 50 teeth thereabouts. And they try to do the best of both worlds, they're the, the jack of all trades. So they want to be able to rip and crosscut. In my personal opinion, they don't rip as quickly or cross cut as smoothly, but they do a good job of both. So it's the sort of saw you might want to get if you've only got a table saw, for example, and you just want to leave one blade on and not have to change it all the time. Then that's the blade for you. So if I was buying a new saw blade and I wasn't familiar with the brand, things I would look for to try and determine the quality are the quality of the plate itself, how well the plate's been made, is it nice and smooth? Has it been polished? Or does it have all ridges and things in it that are going to increase the friction? Some blades are painted or coated with a friction reducing um, finish. They can be good or they can be hiding imperfections. So you've really got to look through them. And uh, this is unfortunately one of those times when a bit of brand name recognition can be helpful. You know, if it's a CMT, chances are it's going to be a decent quality. Another thing to look for, if you've got a carbide tipped or carbide toothed blade like this one, is to check out the welds where the carbide teeth meet the blade. They should be smooth, you shouldn't see any pits or pockets or air holes or anything else in there. They should be brazed on really nicely. You'll notice all the blades we've looked at so far have carbide teeth. Now there's a reason for that, most blades these days have carbide teeth. Carbide stays sharp longer and it's really good in particle boards, MDF, plywood, anything with glue that tends to be quite abrasive. A plain steel tooth blade will go blunt very quickly. You can still get plain steel blades and the advantage of, advantages of those are that they often have a thinner kerf and uh, leave a nice smooth finish but they do need sharpening more often and that's the disadvantage and they're no good in the glued woods as mentioned. Carbide teeth on the other hand will stay sharp longer um, and you can sharpen them more often but the downside is this carbide's quite brittle so if you hit a screw or a stone while you're cutting that can chip the blade and I have actually had that happen. Sometimes trees when they grow up will end up with little bits of stone inside them, who'd have thought hey? But I've actually hit one and chipped the blade doing it. So that's a good reason to have a carbide, that's a good reason to have a steel blade if you're dealing with rough sawn lumber. In fact, I think you'll find that most of the big blades in lumber mills are steel. I don't think they have the carbide. But for home use, I reckon go carbide. Okay, well, that's pretty much it. That wraps it all up. So hopefully that's been of some use for you. Hopefully that will help you pick out what sort of saw you need. Uh, so until next time, have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.